Good morning and happy Thursday to you. Indeed, can you believe it's been a week since we have had some time together. It is really an honour and a privilege to spend these Thursday mornings with you. Let's just pray before we continue today with our incredible series on trees. Father, we thank you that you are good to us. We thank you that you are faithful, that you are steadfast, that you are unchanging in all of your ways. We speak that over our lives today. We have a good, good Father. And as we set this time apart to hear hear from you, to learn from you, to be inspired and encouraged by your word. We thank you that you always show up and that through your Holy Spirit, every single one of us listening, everyone watching will be impacted in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, let's see who we have this morning and we're going to kick off by greeting you. If you're watching on Facebook, um, we have Shalom and uh, family from Paula Kwane. Uh, then we, oh, Shalom, sorry. Pauline from Paula Kwane. I get it. Shalom, you're greeting me. Thank you for that. <laughs> I love it. Jackie from Vieta Park. Then there's Shanae, all the way from Vietnam. Such a faithful viewer. We love and miss you, Shanae. There's Morena saying good morning. Norma greeting all the girls. Pusiletso from Welcome. Then there's uh, Natasha, also from Vietnam. Good morning and thank you for joining us. And then we have Lauren from Hrabo. That is in South Africa, for those who did not know. Priscilla is watching. We have Lydia saying good morning from Tembisa. We have Kay and, and we have Betty from Namibia. Good morning to you. Uh, we have Doris from Reimsich. We have Susanna. We have Marion. Uh, we have, let's see, Lala saying good morning to all of the beautiful ladies indeed. Then there's Lele from Limpopo this morning. We have Colleen from the Reeds. Tuli from Bushbuck Ridge. Uh, Ruth Ann, Tato um, saying hi from Rustenburg and the rest of you on Facebook. Good morning and welcome. Let's just greet a few of you on YouTube today. Let's see. We have Kulu from Polokwani, Lelani also from Polokwani. There's Priscilla from Irene. Majaji saying good morning. Amu from Club View. There's Wendy from Namibia. There's my mom, Joy, from Alberton. Good morning to you, mom. Gumohau from Moikluf. We have Roslyn from Pretoria North. There's Ntumbi from Johannesburg. Aubrey from Irene. We have Blessing and Busi from Irene as well and then everybody else on YouTube we can give only a few shout outs we don't want to spend all our time as as you can see there's so many of you but welcome to each and every single one be reminded today that God is your good good father and as you listen to all the messages all the conversation today let that resonate deep within your heart we're going to start with a word from one of our local pastors and today we have the privilege of listening to Busi. Good morning, Pastor Shanae and all the beautiful ladies at For The Girls. It's another beautiful Thursday morning and today I'm really encouraged by a scripture where David is actually speaking to himself and he's addressing his soul. I think us as girls need to do that a lot, speak to ourselves, right? And this is what David says in Psalm 42 verse 5. He says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. I think sometimes, ladies, we need to speak to ourselves. We need to command our souls to praise the Lord, you know, because sometimes circumstances can be crazy. Who knows what I'm talking about? You're running a household. Things are going wrong all around you. But we need to remind ourselves that our hope is in God. We need to speak to our souls and command our souls to bless him and to glorify him because he's never lost control. Actually, when you go a little bit further on in that scripture in verse eight, it says, but each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. And through each night I sing his song pray to the God who gives me life ladies we need to be people who are steadfast in praying to the God who gives us life so be of good courage today he's on your side and with him you can never lose thank you thank you so much Brucey and yes I I also love that psalm and be well reminded today that our souls cannot be in control of our lives we have feelings we have thoughts we have experiences we have opinions we have moods we have hormones we have many things Things that we try and dictate to us how we would approach every single day. But I want to challenge you to say to yourself, 
God is my good, good father. There is always hope because he is alive and he is on my side. And encourage yourself. You know what? Sometimes girls, we just need to be our own cheerleader because life is giving us a whole bunch of lemons. So just continuously encourage yourself in the Lord. And I really feel today that we need to be reminded of this incredible truth that we are not just creation, we are children of God. And so we're going to turn our attention now to our series. Like I said, we are busy speaking on trees and we have learned so much together over the past couple of weeks. I hope that this has been a blessing to you. Um, I want you to today uh, continue with me as we look at the fir tree, F-I-R, fir, not if you are. So please don't get all upset. We are not speaking about any animal fir today, but the fir tree as we find it in the scripture. And we have learned so much and I've tried to find different kinds of trees because there's many that belong to the same family that will have the same characteristics that will speak to the same thing in our lives but now here is a new family that we haven't looked at the conifer family of trees and we're going to see what the word of God has to say about this but let's look at a few images first so we can have the pictures in our minds as we talk around the word of God and there you have it I think this is a very familiar tree Uh, we would all maybe maybe not all but some of us identify that as our Christmas tree uh, that we would see around Christmas season in many, many homes. And on the next slide, um, you will see this, this really, and this is from the Holy Land. So this is a a, a picture um, taken by a, a skilled, this is a professional photographer that took this uh, f- photo of the fir trees growing in Israel. And then lastly, I wanted to show you up close. There we go. There are those leaves we all know very well. They're more like needles, right? Um, and then the cones. Actually, that, as you see it there on the screen, that is the fruit of this tree. So it is not a fruit that you can eat. And under those many scales, you will find then the seed of this incredibly beautiful tree. Um, And so as you have that now in your mind's eye, let's look at uh, a little bit of practical application around this tree, what it was used for. So we all see that very distinctive shape of this tree, which is very different to any other tree that we've looked at. Uh, Different translations in the Bible. So if you now go and type in fir in a Bible thesaurus, you will find some scriptures, but in many Bible translations, this is also um, used, the, the word cypress is also used in but it's the same tree that they're speaking about. So it can be a cypress or a fir. As you will look then in different translations of the Bible, you will see they use these two words uh, differently. But it's speaking about this beautiful tree. Um, So the the form of of it makes it very unique. And then also in the right atmosphere, in the right environment, this tree grows up to 80 meters tall. That's incredibly tall. And I think especially in Europe, when we travel uh, and and we go to the mountains, we see these and they are towering tall uh, trees. A beautiful, beautiful sight indeed. They, like I said, are conifers and their the leaves then are the sharp pointed needle like uh, um, leaves where the fruit is the cone with uh, the seed under all of those little scales. Another thing that's very unique about this tree is its bark. The wood of the tree has uh, has dots that would if even in, um, in that state where the wood is being used you could identify it immediately based on what it looks like, the discs or the dots then that you would see on the bark of this tree. And And again, I think this is most amazing how God incorporates everything. Again, this wood was used in the construction of Solomon's temple. Now, remember, we've been looking at this for a couple of weeks and how all of the trees were incorporated in the building of the temple. I I think that just speaks once again, though we are extremely unique, though we are very individualistically put together and designed by God, there's no one like you. You are, as your fingerprint is unique, your being your character, you as a person, you are uniquely designed by God. But see, it's never about can we stand out in our individualism, but rather can all of us, as different as we are, come together and build the house of God. So for me, that's the first thing of significance as we look at yet another different species, a different shape, a different everything to what we've looked at before, but how God incorporates all into this beautiful building, the temple, and now the church 
church of Jesus Christ in the 21st century. Um, it had many, many uses. This tree, uh, the wood especially, were, were, the wood was used in a lot of building. The different things were built of it, houses, uh, ships, roofs, so uh, a lot of construction use around this tree and then something that we haven't seen before now, the wood of this tree is used to make musical instruments. So that was the first thing I wanted to focus on today, that there is a sound and it's very unique to your life. There is a sound that resonates from you being. It's not just when you open your lips that there's a sound. Your life is a message. Your life is a lesson. Your life is a sermon. Your life resounds into the very atmosphere, the way you are living your life is a sound and I pray that it will be a beautiful sound. Remember David played and literally the Bible speaks about how he played on instruments made of fir wood in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6 and as he was worshipping God, as he was praising God and I pray that our lives will be that, a sound, a sound that will invite, a sound that will glorify God, a sound that will praise him, our entire existence be being a sweet melody to the ears of others about the love, the faithfulness, the grace, the mercy, the patience, the steadfastness of our good, good Father. And then it continues in the book of Song of Solomon in chapter 1, and it speaks about the fragrance of this tree. I think all of you know many of our Many of our household products actually would be scented and it will, we, will, we will call it pine. Um, but th this is the smell that we know. I remember as a little girl, we had one of those pine trees hanging from the mirror in our car and it had the whole vehicle smelling so lovely. And that is the thing about the pine needle. It has a very distinct fragrance, an inviting fra fragrance, a very specific fragrance, an identifiable fragrance. And so the sound of our lives and the smell of our lives. Do you know in the message translation, it speaks of us as children of God, as daughters of God, being this, the, the fragrance and the color. Today, I want to say the smell and the sound of God to every single person. You don't have to say the name Jesus. You don't have to switch over into preaching mode where you start quoting scripture. You, in your everyday, ordinary interaction with people, should be the sound of heaven, should be the smell of heaven and that I think is a beautiful beautiful metaphor for us today that as the fir tree has a very uniqueness to it it's the smell and it's the and it's the sound of those instruments that would draw people into what the presence of God that aroma and that 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 melody would bring them into the very presence of the father and so I pray that our lives will be now a very interesting thing about this tree that maybe they are they, I shall say firstly let's put a disclaimer that there is a little bit of controversy around this because only one place in the Bible is the wood of the ark of Noah mentioned and it's called gopher wood uh, but many scholars would agree that the gopher wood the wood that was used to build the ark would be this tree um, it was, as we could see later in the Bible, uh, the most used wood in the construction of ships. So the gopher wood that's mentioned once in the Bible, scholars, most scholars agree that it would be this. So, so we see that it had a very unique um, ability to be used for instruments and for smell to bring aroma through its needles and uh, and now we see used to what what does the ark represent the place of what the place of safety in the ark everyone was safe from the flood and I believe that as our lives representing this tree, we can be a place of safety for the broken, for, for the discouraged, for those who are ready to give up, that we will be a place where people can be honest and transparent about where they are at, hello, and not be a person around whom people have to wear masks and be so careful how they tread around you that they don't want to upset you or they can't be who they are because you will judge them and criticize size them. So our lives, a sound, the sound of heaven, a smell, the smell of God, changing the atmosphere, bringing people into the presence of God. And when we think of the ark of Noah, the place of safety, the place of rescue, the place of preservation,
salvation. May our hearts be that to many people. May our lives be that to many people. A place of what? Security and knowing that no matter what, no matter the storms of life, no matter how high this flood rises, no matter how long it endures, there is a place where I am safe. I am safe with you. And today, before we continue on um, to our other segments, I wanted to also show you how this would uh, speaks of the coming uh, age where Jesus would rule on, on the earth. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, there's a bit of a prophetic utterance around this tree, and I love it. It says, instead of the thorn, now remember when Adam and Eve sinned, the earth was cursed, the earth, not the people, but the earth was cursed and the Bible said that it would produce thorns and thistles. Thorns and thistles in the word of God always speaks to, um, it speaks to the curse on the earth, the, 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 the desert, the wilderness, the barrenness, the desolation, the destruction. Remember in paradise, everything was flourishing and fruitful and green. And now we see the stark contrast between the Garden of Eden and the wilderness and uh, the, the deserts, uh, the places of barrenness and desolation. And here the Bible says that instead of the thorns, in the place of thorns will come up what? The fir tree. What an incredible imagery around the breaking of the curse on the earth and the restoration of the original blessing of God. And you know what? We don't have to wait for heaven. If we apply the blood of Jesus here and now, we can be free of the curse. For many of you, you have maybe lived your life under a curse. And, and by that, I don't mean some Sangoma spoke a curse over you, but you've believed the lies that, that previous generations struggled with. The sicknesses, the diseases, the arguments against a prospering, a successful, fruitful in the kingdom of God family. Maybe you've just said, well, this is who we are. This is just what we associate with our family. I want you to know that by the blood of Jesus, every curse has been broken and you can be restored to the original blessing of God, which is what? Fruitfulness, multiplication, filling until there is such a multitude that it can subdue and have dominion and that is the blessing of God on your life. So you are born to be the sound of heaven to the world, the smell of God, the beautiful fragrance of God in every situation, a place of safety and a prophetic voice of the blessing of God that is available through the blood of Jesus Christ. Here specifically in the scripture, it's speaking about how everything will be transformed when Jesus returns. But remember, it's, it's not just the final return of Christ, but he came to the earth and broke the power of darkness, of thorns and thistles, of curses and arguments over your life that you may live in true freedom. And our closing scripture around the fir tree, there are many, many more as we find every single week when you look for something, you see how God uses it throughout the word to put something into play and help us understand better what he is saying to us. But now in the book of Hosea, God compares himself Self. So in all the other scriptures, it's, it's, it's human related. It's us and positioning ourselves accurately in the things of God. But here in the book of Hosea, God says of himself that he is like a green fir tree. And I want to read this verse to you uh, from Hosea 14. And I'm going to use both the New Living and the Amplified translations. It says here, in the New Living Translation first, it says, Israel, my people, stay away from idols. I am the one who answers your prayers and who cares for you. I am like a green fir tree, a tr green fir or cypress tree, the Amplified Version says, that is always green. And that is something about these conifers. They are evergreen, no matter the season, no matter the severity of the environment, seeing extreme conditions like the snow in the Alps, seeing extreme conditions like the deserts of Israel. They were evergreen. They were able to, no matter the season, be green. And God says of himself, no matter what is happening, no matter what is going on, no matter the season, I am there for you. And what does it say? To answer your prayers and to care for you. Look at the tree. It stands no matter the weather, unchanging, unchanging, um, steadfast, faithful. God says, I am like that. I hear your prayers. I will answer your prayers. I care for you. 
Hallelujah. I am steadfast. I am faithful towards you because I love you so much. I am a green fir tree. And now this part from the Amplified Version is so beautiful. And I think someone today just needed to be reminded about the goodness, the faithfulness, the steadfastness of of God as our Father. He says, with me is the fruit found which will nourish you. Many of us, maybe our lives have become dry and we lack life. Um, you know what the pine trees are so very known for, the fir trees, it's their resin, their sap. Now there's always, the, it's used for many things, uh, but there's always an abundance of it. God says, I'm that tree and I will nourish you because I care for you. It says, my with me is the fruit that you need that will nourish you eat of me and be nourished if you are discouraged today if you are depressed today if you are hopeless today all you need to do is eat of god because the fruit of him will nourish your soul in actual fact the bible says it will even strengthen you in your physical body what a beautiful tree as we celebrate our incredible god who created the universe not just for our comfort and convenience but as a display of his character as a as a as an invitation and a call for us to be just like him i pray that you were enriched through the knowledge of the word but much more than that that in your spirit you would have been stirred to live up to this incredible jesus that is living inside of you together we're going to change the world we're going to break away right now and we have a special insert today as we are all preparing for easter and some easter fun for the family let's take a look at our next section some Easter fun that you can have with the family instead of just handing out the Easter eggs maybe you can spend some time together in decorating and making some funky eggs uh, we want to uh, <laughs> encourage you not to lose the message of Easter in all of this remember it's not about the egg but in everything that we do together we can always share the message and the relevance of Jesus Christ especially as we are entering into that season the shops are overflowing with Easter decorations with Easter treats and I pray that it will be a unique time for your family to sit at the foot of the cross and to consider what Jesus has done for us. Now, let's take a look at what you were up to over the past week as we every week uh, put a unity challenge to you as our incredible girl world. Let's see what you were up to as we asked you to share around. And girls, I should have excluded myself, so I'm sorry if a lot of the posts were about me. That was not the intention at all. It was International Women's Day and we wanted you to share around people people who inspire you um, next time exclude me from any challenge that I put to you okay <laughs> we want to see about other people but here we go for today enjoy
in honor of International Women's Day, write down three words that describe a woman leader that inspires you. Tag her and let's celebrate the awesome spirit of womanhood. You can directly message us or share posts or stories on our various social media platforms. Try one of Damien's recipes and share with us your results. You can tag the It's a Girl Thing page at IAGT underscore 3C and hashtag IAGT Unity. And there you have it. Isn't it incredible how God always supports us? We are part of community. It's the heart of God that we don't live in isolation, but God has connected us to, to the most amazing woman that uh, can help support us when we are down, but also model for us how to live lives that will glorify Jesus. And may we raise our daughters like that, not to be individualistic, but to be community orientated, to have a heart for people, to understand the heart of God for all of humanity, to reach out our hands, um, to, to be like we read today, a sound, a sound and a smell and a place where people experience the presence of God. Just as he nourishes, we pray that when people are around us, the sound of our lives, the smell of our lives, the safety of our lives will be nourishment unto them. And that we will use whatever God has gifted us with, the talents, the opportunities, the resource, everything that he has made available to us for the good of of his kingdom to glorify his name. And remember, remember, remember that the curse of the earth has been broken. The blood of Jesus has spoken for you. And I want to pray with you today. If you are struggling in a landscape of thorns and thistles, because God says of himself, I am the fir tree that will nourish you. So whatever you are going through today, we are going to bring it to God and trust him to turn all of it around. And just as the blood broke the curse on the day that Jesus poured himself out on that cross, today still with that same power, it is at work for those who believe. All you have to do, you don't have to first earn it. You can never pay for it. There's nothing you can do to deserve it. Everything about the blood of Christ is connected to grace, which means what? It is a free gift, a gift from God to you. So whatever you are going through right now, and maybe your life is in a good place, but won't you just pray with me for everybody who's under pressure, who's overwhelmed, who's struggling, and trust God with me that the curse of the earth will be broken and that the the blessing of heaven will rain down in Jesus name. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for the death of Jesus Christ that liberated us from the curse on the earth. No longer will we live our lives surrounded by thorns and thistles. No longer will our efforts produce thorns and thistles. But as we read in your word, we speak a blessing, the blessing of the fir tree over every one of your daughters today. Our lives will not be a horrible sound that will repel people, will not be a terrible smell that will push people away from you, a broken ship that will have people drown. No, our lives will be the sound of heaven itself, the symphony that it's intended to be. It will be the smell that invites a, a fragrance that attracts. It will be a safe boat, a place of, of security and protection 
protection just as we have seen in your word today because the curse is removed from us. All of that negativity, all of that barrenness, all of the destruction of it. Lord, by your blood, we thank you. We are set free and we step into a place of divine blessing. And as you nourish us, we will run to you. We will feed on you. We will drink of you and be nourished. We pray that you will take us as nourishment into the earth. Use our everyday, ordinary girl lives to change the world for the good in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Remember, you may WhatsApp, you may SMS, you may email. Let us know if you are in need of prayer and we commit to pray with you for 30 days. Our intercessory team will cover you, your family and your prayer request before the Lord for 30 continuous calendar days. So may the Lord bless you and I look forward to being with you again next Thursday. Remember, we're going to wrap up our series on trees on the Thursday just before the Easter weekend and uh, we have some exciting uh, things uh, to see say over the next two weeks as we consider the trees and finally our final installment the tree of calvary see you next thursday bye bye no matter the age no matter the background no matter the journey ladies this is for you to the mother the daughter and the sister this is for you we invite you to join us for an encouraging jam-packed program with Pastor Shanae Pretorius every Thursday at 11 a.m. For every girl, for the girls.